Right, this is a lecture on complex numbers. It's for complex analysis, but it's also useful for other stuff, uh, such as, I think, core 1 back in A-level. Uh, we say a complex number is z plus x plus iy. Now, x here is the real part of z, and the y is the imaginary part. And this i is donated as the imaginary number of the square root of negative 1. Because we know there isn't a an answer for the square root of a negative number, so we've created an imaginary one called i. Now addition with these, if we have z is x plus i y and w as u plus i v, then z plus w is just simply all the real parts added together and all the imaginary parts added together. So x plus u is the real part plus i times y times v, y plus v, sorry. Multiplication, again, is just the same as well. We have z w so we have our z and our w, and we're just multiplying them together as normal brackets are. So we have xu plus ixv plus iyu plus i squared yv. Now the reason I haven't wrote, written i squared is that i squared, as we know from i, is the no i itself, is just negative 1. Because if we square all this, we'll get... Uh, square root of minus 1 squared. If you square a square root, you'll get it'll cancel out, so we'll get minus 1. So I put a minus in front there. So we can say uh, xw is xu minus yv as our real part plus i ti uh, times xv plus yu as our imaginary part. Right now, the complex conjugate. This is useful for division, and all it is is we reverse the sign that is in front of the i. So if we have a plus, then we change it to a minus, and we denote this with a line on top of our letter, in this case, z. So z and the complex conjugate is z with a bar on top. So where z is x plus i y, a conjugate is x minus i y. The modulus is a single number, so it's just the square root of all the components squared, so the, squ the real squared plus the imaginary squared. And division, this is where you have to use a neat little trick, and what we have is z over w, so we've got x plus iy over u plus iv, and all you do is you multiply both bottom, top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. Yeah, so we've got z w bar w w bar, and I've got an example of this in a minute. And these are some rules which you've been given, um, and they might be useful for you, might not. But we have the modulus of z w equals the modulus of z times the modulus of w. The modulus of z conjugate equals modulus of z. The modulus of z plus w is less than or equal to the modulus of z plus the modulus of w. This is the triangle inequality. And the modulus of the modulus of z minus the modulus of w is less than or equal to the modulus of z plus or minus w. And this is the reverse triangle inequality. You probably won't need them. Right, examples. This is our first one. It's just a simple multiplication. Find 2 plus 4i times 1 plus 3i. Now, we just simply multiply the brackets out. So we get 2 plus 6i minus plus 4i plus 12i squared. And of course the i squared is minus 1, so we've got 2 minus 12, which is minus 10. And the 6 plus 4, it gives us 10i, and that's our solution there. This one, a little trickier find 2 plus 4i over 1 plus 3i. This is uh, our special case before, remember, where we have to multiply by the con complex conjugate of the bottom on both top and bottom. Yep, which will be 1 minus 3i. Yep, so 1 minus 3i, 1 minus 3i, we multiply. And because, look, 1 minus 3i over 1 minus 3i is 1, so we're not actually doing anything, so we're allowed to do this. And if we multiply it out, then we'll have 2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times minus 3, so minus 6i, 
4i and 4 times 3 is 12, i squared is minus 1, we've got the minus there so it become plus 12. And for the bottom we'll have 1 minus 3i plus 3i and then plus 9 because you'll get i squared which will be minus 1. So we'll have 3 times minus 3 times minus 1 which is 9. And every time the imaginary parts here will cancel on the bottom making it nice and easy for yourself. So we've got, we get all the real parts together, which is 2 plus 12, which is 14, divided by 10. And our imaginary parts of i times minus 2i, actually ignore that i, that i shouldn't be there. That one there shouldn't be there. And divide it by 10. And that's your solution. Now I've got some interesting things to look at here. These are just graphs. You don't need to look at this from now on. Um... What I've done is I've got, this is a, a point here I've plotted, this is an imaginary, uh, this is a complex graph where we have the real numbers across here and the imaginary up, up and down here. So say the point there is just 3 plus 0i and here we've got the, I've plotted the point 1 plus 2i. It's going along 1 and up 2i. And all I've done is I've multiplied by real numbers here so I've multiplied by 2 by 3 and this has given me a line here and I've also multiplied by i so multiply by i and then 2i and it's given me another line here now I find this quite interesting because it looks like the plane has turned yeah do you see it and what what we can do if we we have this as our 1 plus 2i if we multiply this by 1 plus i then this is the point we get. If we multiply it by 2 plus i, this is the point we get. And it's quite interesting because look, 1 plus i, we've gone along 1, and we've gone up 1i, and we've got this point here. So it's like we've shifted the graph and we're plotting new points. So we're going across 2 and up i, which is plotting a point here, which is 1 plus 2i times... Uh, 2 plus i. I just find that quite interesting. And I've got another one here, which is again the same again, to show it's not just a spoof of 2 plus 3i. And again, I've done the same again. I've times it by 2, and there wasn't enough room, so just 2 there, and so on. And for, for multiplying by i, I've got a point here. Multiplying by 2i, I've got a point here. And again, if we multiply this 2 plus 3i by 1 plus i, we get the point here, so we've gone along 1 and up i, and it's given us the point here. It's like we've shifted the plane and we're plotting, plotting new points, and I find this quite interesting. So if we were to do uh, multiply this by 1 plus 2i, then we get the point here. And we just, we've already proved that if we multiply by 2i, we get a point here, because there's no real but 2i. And the only other thing that I notice, which there is actually no sequence with, is if you divide. So if I've divided I've divided here by i and it's gone down one i and if we divide it by two i it'll go further down. But if we have if we divide like by one plus two i we'll get something around here and there's no real pattern that I could find. But I just find this quite interesting.